This series of videos was developed as part of the First Presbyterian Church of Norwalk's confirmation class. We are glad you're here. You're not alone on the journey of faith. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. John 14, 27. Today's topic is the end. Many of our ideas about the end of the world and the afterlife have nothing to do with what the Bible teaches or what the church has actually believed over the years. Now, many of us probably don't even think about these questions until there's a crisis. Perhaps a death in your family or an event like 9-11 can remind us of our mortality. Someday, we will die. Now, the idea of death certainly can be scary. The Bible itself calls death an enemy that needs to be defeated. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 26. You might remember our discussion about the story of the scriptures. Here's the outline that we used. Creation, rebellion, redemption, and new creation. Christians have always understood that our rebellion, or our sin, necessitated death. Also, we have understood that our redemption is our rescue from death. We believe that Jesus gives us new life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 Jesus accomplishes our rescue by his own death and his resurrection. We still die, but for those who belong to Christ, we have access to eternal life with Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul writes, For to me living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I'm hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and to be with Christ, for that is far better. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 21 to 23. However, we do not believe that the faithful simply float around on clouds playing harps after their death. We don't even believe that we become angels. Instead, at the resurrection, we receive new bodies. The Apostles' Creed states, I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life as everlasting. Amen. Jesus' resurrection was the start of something bigger. The faithful will receive new bodies. These bodies are like our former bodies, but still different. This is the culmination of the new creation that begins with the salvation that we receive from God in Jesus Christ. Not only will there be bodies, but our world itself will get a makeover. Remember that prayer we say? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We ask that God bring his kingdom here on earth. God's answer to that prayer is yes. In fact, we see glimpses of that now. But eventually, God will remake the entire world. Heaven and earth will be one. In the book of Revelation, we see a vision of this new reality. The apostle John writes, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, and they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. Because of what God has accomplished in Jesus, we do not need to fear disease, tragedy, or death. We know that they're only temporary. We also can participate in God's mission to the world. We are heralds of God announcing his goodness and grace. By working for justice and mercy, we live into the new creation and we become a witness of God.